So, of course, moving on for the UK, we've got good news for us. Um, of well, for some of the parts of the UK, as it's mentioned here on BBC, it says here, COVID, what are the new tiers and lockdown rules in England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland? Um, so it says here, England um, enters a tougher version of its free tier system of restrictions on Wednesday on a four week lockdown ends. As, as a four week lockdown ends, sorry. Northern Ireland has a two week circuit breaker lockdown while Wales is banning itself alcohol in pubs, cafes, and restaurants from Friday, which is insane. So it continues while England's new lockdown rules. Just after midnight on Wednesday, the 2nd of December, areas will be placed on free tiers lockdowns, medium, high, and very high. About 99% of England has been placed in the high and very high of coronavirus risks and tiers two and three um the placing of the areas in each tier will be reviewed every 14 days with the first review on the 16th of december which to me sounds like a far better option to we should have probably done this before we did the national lockdown but i guess the number was too high but hey oh, what can you do so for tier two which is where i am at here in the uk um Obviously, you've got the areas that are covered here. Unfortunately for Manchester, you know, your neighbours, Liverpool, are in Tier 2 and you're in Tier 3. That must be a hell of a ride. So I'm assuming a lot of people are going to be travelling down to Tier 2 areas to go in on a night out, whatever they're going to do. So that's going to be an interesting um, thing to witness over the weekend. But hey, we move. So those, obviously, the areas you see here, London, all 32 boroughs are in Tier 2, bloody blah, blah, blah. So Tier 2 rules as follows. Um, it says here, Tier 2, um, you can't socialise indoors with anybody you don't live with or who is not your support bubble, which is an interesting one considering that a lot of the bars and clubs that I am sort of up, that I'm sort of registered on their sort of a promotional email list, they've been emailing out all these newsletters and, and alerts, letting people know that, hey, we have table service and we're able to accommodate up to this many people. So you're still, you're, you're, don't get me wrong, you're not socializing because you're going to be in these little bubble table things, but you're still around people you don't necessarily live with. So that's a bit of a weird rule that one, but hey, we continue. Um, second one so that you can meet in a group of up to six people outside including in a garden or in a public place which is cool um, the most important one for me shops gyms and personal care services such as hairdressers can reopen if COVID is secure which is great um, and they've also mentioned that gyms will not close um, at all um, throughout all the tiers well that's with the exception of a new national lockdown if a national lockdown comes in again which you know Gove has definitely said the other day that oh we're not going to go into another one but you know you never know with this government but I like the fact that in under any of those tiers the gyms will never close so I'm always going to have an option to go to gym in the morning which is definitely going to be a life saver and definitely a benefit for my overall mental health so that's pretty good and of course shops as well maybe I'll be able to buy some of that Jill Sander Uniqlo stuff who knows we're going to try uh, pubs and bars can re um, only reopen if they serve substantial meals alcohol can be served with that meal and that's something that's been a bit of a con point of contrition in the uk with this whole meals debacle right they've been trying to um they were trying to figure out what is the substantial meal the substantial meal count is it fries is it a scotch egg is it a burger is it a packet of crisp is it the amount of calories it contains really confusing way to do things but hey i guess they have to kind of get around this idea of people they kind of have to justify why pubs and bars are open and other places aren't so the way to justify it is by saying are oh, you eating food right in that way but it's just a bizarre way to do it but what can you do and i think they've also even stipulated to some bar owners that if people aren't eating they should chuck them out of their restaurants or bars which is insane um, it, could, it continues um, pubs and restaurants must shut at 11pm and um, we've lost orders at 10 which brings the the drinking limit or the drinking time limit up, up an hour from 10 to 11 it continues as sports will can resume with up to 2,000 spectators or 50 percent capacity whichever is smaller which is definitely going to be a benefit to some of the london clubs who've been suffering i'm sure the most deaf or had been suffering in some way shape or form during lockdown so that's going to allow them to have some money to be able to come through um, the gates it continues here collective worship weddings and outdoor sports can resume as well which is flipping awesome so you can see a lot more people playing football five aside outdoors maybe the return of saturday league football um what's that one called power league all that good stuff that's going to be great to see um non-essential foreign travel is allowed subject to quarantine rule which is great and people are advised not to travel to and from their tea areas so those are the rules that are coming into place from tomorrow or from today if you're listening to the podcast so definitely if you're in london um you'd be happy with that in other parts of the uk if you're in other parts of the uk that are like tier three the very highest oof, 
it says the following um you can't mix with anybody you don't live with you can meet in groups up to six people outdoors shops and gyms and personal care services are can reopen um that's tier three right uh no gear hospitality venues such as bars and cafes restaurants must stay closed just definitely the bummer um especially as sports cannot resume another bummer indoor entertainment venues such as bowling and cinemas must stay closed so look at all these things that are kind of been refused for you to do and people are advised not to travel to and from tier three the from there from tier three areas so you can't go in and out of where you live supposedly but look at the restrictions look at the restrictions so you can go to the gym and get a haircut but you, you and meet your friends outdoors in the winter in the uk especially up north it's just going to be an absolute nightmare so prayers and force guide to people living outside of london who are having to deal with this in general and of course tier one um there's not a lot of places that are in tier one southeast on the isle of Wight, cornwall and the isle of sicily um it says here the rules are the rule of six is to apply it says sports can resume with a crowd of 50 percent of four person capacity and the exceptions for these tiers and child care support bubbles and more so interesting way to approach it again um you know we are where we are now you know the government have done a pretty poor job in terms of handling um you know or in terms of supporting certain segments of our industry of course a lot of the hospitality sector is hurting uh, freelancers are hurting there's really mistakes all over the place everywhere you turn somewhere is definitely fucked up in some way shape or form but again um considering the time of year we're in and considering what's at stake and considering what's obviously down the road with the vaccine this is probably the best option that we had available for us to kind of resume to some level of normality going forward so i'm definitely looking forward to kind of re-engaging back with society and living world going out for a run being able to go to the gym in the evening get a haircut maybe hang out with some friends in a bar that's going to be definitely a good way to sort of like kind of shift my thinking and my brain because it's definitely been a bit of a dark one the past six months or so being kind of locked up at home and not being able to do certain things that's definitely going to be a bit of a lifesaver in that regard and then of course um if matters weren't even more kind of ridiculous you have the whole sausage scotch egg sausage scotch egg debacle which is a sausage isn't it right it's a sausage sort of like outer um that's been occurring with this whole stupid um non substantial meal thing going on um with the uk where if you go and eat have a drink in a bar you have to have a meal um when you're sitting down so they're trying to really they're trying to kind of figure out what is a substantial meal what equates for that and Michael Gove um, is being kind of grilled from pillar to post, really. And it's interesting because I think I watched some of the bits of the footage of him going to different TV stations and places and sort of trying to fight his corner and explain things away. And it seemed like he didn't really have an idea or a clue on the rules himself prior to him leaving the office, right? Or leaving the House of Parliament to go to these different TV stations or studios. He seemed to just be like figuring out along the way as he went to different places. He didn't seem to have like a bit of a white paper or an idea on what the sort of landscape was, what is allowed, what isn't allowed, what are the main talking points. He just seemed to kind of just answer and figure it out along the way. And I guess maybe catch up with some of his advisors. But I was thinking this is really bizarre, isn't it? How some of these politicians go about doing their job like they don't seem to really do any research any prior work before the, they don't seem to sort of like read up on what they're going to talk about um maybe um figure out where some of the points of sort of like pushback are some figure out sort of some of the counterpoints are to their point or what they're trying to say what are some of the other arguments that exist out there this seems to be like let me just figure out as i go along but hey what can you do so an article here from the guardian it says scotch egg is definitely a substantial meal says michael gove <laughs> what a world we live in imagine the, the people are dying right on a weekly basis whole industries are crumbling um you know like the support system is being pulled away from from underneath their feet and here michael gove is giggling and laughing over our scotch egg and shit Anyway, it continues. The Scotch egg is definitely a central meal, Michael Gove has said, as he performed a screeching U-turn on his earlier controversial position that it constituted merely a starter. The whole U-turn thing that people seem to be obsessed with in the UK, I don't really get to. I like when politicians change their mind um, based on the, um, you know, on the availability of more facts that's not really the issue to me i don't really mind that i don't necessarily think that kind of equates to a leader not being um clear on what they wanted prior you know you, you come you come across some more information that maybe um 
goes against what you believe pre prior and you change your mind you do a bit of a u-turn cool all good as long as people don't die i'm all good with that one continues Asked about the status of the, the delicacy a day after his cabinet colleague George Eustace told LBC on Tuesday that a scotch egg would not count, so it would count as a substantial meal if there were a table service and could therefore be served with alcohol by pubs in tier two after lockdown ends. The cabinet office minister said on the radio station a couple of scotch eggs is a starter as far as I'm concerned. 14 minutes later, he said on ITV's Good Morning Britain, as far as I'm concerned, it's probably a starter. My own preference when it comes to a Samuel meal might be more than just a Scotch egg, but that's because I'm a healthy, I'm a hearty trencherman. What? Who gives a shit what you are, man? He's got the most punchable face in the world. It looks like one of those like, rubber ducks, isn't it? You know those rubber ducks that you sort of like, those boneless, sort of, you know, boneless, they are boneless. It's sort of like rug, rug around your hand. Yeah, he's got such a punchable face. It continues. As far as I'm concerned, it's probably just a starter. As I'm a hearty trencher man. The government is relying on people's common sense. I've got, I hate that phrase, common sense. Um, alert, stay alert. All you saw stupid buzzwords. It continues. However, by the time he was interviewed by the ITV News shortly afterwards, the position had evolved. He said, a scotch egg is a substantial meal. I myself would definitely scoff at a couple scotch eggs if I had the chance, but I do recognise it is a substantial meal. So... <sighs> Go of the Chancellor of the, the uh, Duchy the, of the Duchy of Lancaster said that the concept of Sanctuary Mill had existed in law for many years, allowing families to buy sixteen euros an alcoholic drink with food, but he could not say what it was constituted. They already know what the rules are and they are here for years and now so of course passing the buck to the hospitality industry. No, not nice to see there. With businesses facing £10,000 fines, even closure if they fail to comply with coronavirus regulations, the government has been under pressure to set out exactly what constitutes a proper meal. Exactly, because if, the, if, if there's one thing a restaurant or a bar doesn't need during these difficult times, it's a fine. In October, the Housing Secretary Robert Jenerick said a Cornish pasty counted as a meal only if it came with sides. While police in Manchester found themselves at the centre of a confusion when they stopped a pizzeria from serving single slices only to back down after the restaurant pointed out that they were fucking massive. This is absolutely insane. Speaking at the Houston's, um, the Eustace intervention on Monday, Boris Johnson's spokesman attempted to draw a line under the affair by arguing that the principle was well established in the hospitality sector and declined to categorise sausage raw sandwiches and pork pies. So, of course, you know, they've got egg on their faces. They're looking a bit embarrassed. They don't really know what the laws are, what the rules are. They're just throwing around these buzz terms and hoping people don't really pay that much of attention to it. And they want to get called out and they are get asked to provide more details. They sort of cower and hide and say people's common sense can make the standard procedure with this government. And it continues. In legislation published in October, pubs were told that they could only serve alcohol with a table meal that might be expected to be served at a main at a main midday or main evening meal or as a main course as a uh, either such a meal a table meal was defined as a meal eaten by a person seated at a table or at a counter or other structure which serves the purpose of the table and is not used for a service or a refreshment for consumption by a person not seated at a table so they could have all they could have just easily said hey a substantial meal is anything that comes on a plate right because you don't get a pack of crisps on a plate you don't get peanuts on a plate um whatever comes in some sort of cutlery on some sort of you know yeah some sort of cutlery some sort of plate bowl whatever that would count as a substantial meal that's all you have to do it's not that difficult now i'm, I'm assuming not all pubs serve food a lot of the pubs in my area do because they're these trendy gastro pubs but a lot of places don't you know it's work trying to get you know an actual competent chef to do the work in your kitchen maybe a good pop-up restaurant it doesn't always work out well i'm assuming the overheads might be a bit high whatever everyone's got their reasons sometimes a lot of places just get by by you know um uh, ripping off punters by charging them four quid for a pack of crisps but you sort of know that in a pub right you sort of know they're overcharging you for the crisp but you're sort of willing to pay for it because you know you know that money's going into their pockets and helping them keep the lights on and you know making sure the ambiance is nice and just stay open so that you can come in and have your beer so it's a it's a, it's a fair exchange so this whole substantial meal thing again yes hospitality industry knows best and they've probably been doing this for years they know what to do but just just you know cost a bit of consultation prior which i'm sure they did, they never did they probably didn't consult with anybody in the hospitality industry would have avoided all these sort of unnecessary moments of nonsense but again these government what did they what do they know not that much it seems like by all extent and purposes